Okay, well, I should warn you um, that I am deeply offended um, by bad arguments. But don't let that stop you asking questions um, or, or making points. Uh, I'm also offended by people who disagree with me. But I completely support their freedom to, to disagree with me or use bad arguments or poor evidence. I think there's a tremendous value in conversation. I come from a discipline which is fundamentally a, a, often quite a vigorous um, ongoing conversation with living and dead thinkers, philosophy, uh, where we recognise the value of dissenting voices, where we actually seek them out, where, as in the spirit of John Stuart Mill, we recognise that somebody who disagrees with us, disagrees with us, does a great service to us because they stimulate us to thought and get us out of the uh, deep slumber of a decided opinion, that it gives us a chance to express our, our ideas more clearly, to clarify them, but also to have some energy in the way that we interact with, with ideas, that they're not just inert things. When somebody threatens freedom, that's when freedom really matters, not when everybody's got a lot of freedom. Um, so I, I want to defend the freedom to offend people, I think actually the dissenting voices are often, as Mill pointed out, more valuable to us than the conformist ones. There's a sense in which somebody with a, uh, an outlier opinion may be crazy, but they stimulate us to thought, they're catalysts of thought in a way that yet another um, off-the-peg thinker doesn't stimulate us. And we've got to value eccentricity, value the creative thoughts of people, and they may have a little glimmer of truth, that's something else Mill um, pointed out, even the crazy people come up with things which other people haven't thought of sometimes. And of course, most of the um, people who make real progress for society, for, for culture, seem a little crazy to their contemporaries. Um, so, at the same time, I wouldn't go as far as Mick and say that everything goes, which has, um, this, this may be caricaturing his opinion. Um, I do think there are limits to freedom of expression, that you want liberty, not license, that there are Obviously, there's an issue of uh, inciting violence, and that's not easy to draw the line sometimes, where somebody has incited violence. In Mill's example, waving a placard in front of an angry mob outside a corn dealer's house is supposed to be an incitement to violence, where the very same words that are on the placard in a newspaper editorial wouldn't constitute violence. So context is all important. Uh, intention is important as well. So I think we ought to recognise that there is such a thing as hate speech, which is distinct from incidentally causing offence. I, mean, may, I may predictably, foreseeably cause offence to some people here by some of the things I'm saying now. I probably am. Good. Um, um, but that's different from going out of my way to harm you by, by offending you. Um, if I seek... There are certain kinds of hate speech which I, I think do constitute a psychological harm. There are ways in which you could repeatedly abuse someone verbally which could have a longer-lasting effect than a hit around the head. Um, it could be more dramatic in what it does to them psychologically. But those are, comparatively, you know, those are comparatively rare in dialogue. And I think the presumption should be that we defend extensive freedom of expression. Um, and if I ever wavered on that, I will remember that um, I've been very privileged to make a series of podcasts called Free Speech Bites, which, Free Speech Bites, which are made for Index on Censorship where I interviewed um, Natal Natalia Cagliada at the Belarus Free Theatre, who has who's been tortured for her, her beliefs. And I interviewed Zagana, who's a, uh, a Burmese comedian who spent over two years in solitary confinement and was brutally tortured. These people know what it is to have their, their freedom of speech savagely curtailed, and they're still passionate advocates of it. They value it even more because they recognise um, the value of expression, to, the freedom to make a joke that offends um, a tyrant. But this is so important in life, um, and it's so easily lost. So I'm sympathetic to several of the views expressed here, but I, I, I want to say there are limits to freedom of expression, but we should have a presumption that we should be free to offend people up to the point where we are actually harming them psychologically. Um, people can be very, very sensitive, as I am, to bad arguments. I think we should develop reasonably thick skins and enjoy the cut and thrust of debate and recognise that it's actually doing somebody, uh, paying somebody a compliment to argue with them, to dissent from their view. Thank you.